session. And uh, have the roll call, please. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Roth? Here. Commissioner Mum? Here. Commissioner Polly? Here. And Mayor Neely? Here. And uh, with that, uh, any future agenda items, we usually bring those up at the commission meeting, or do we? Or? Nope. No. Uh, always at work sessions. No. I don't. <laughs> Where have I been for the last year? <laughs> anyway, year. Yeah. the last how many years? <laughs> <laughs> the last twelve years. Time flies. <laughs> anyway. I, I have something. Yes, go ahead. I want to talk about um, <coughs> those things that people are putting in their yard, uh, the storage pods, oh. mm -hmm. and that are seeming to stay for months and months mm -hmm. and months. Yeah. Um. Wasn't it like a those the hard sided containers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're called pods, right? Yeah, and we've got the, the ordinance against the tarped things, mm -hmm. but these things are staying around for a long time. You, uh, have you made any complaints about that to the code enforcement? Mm -hmm. So I know you've you well, I don't know if you can do this anymore, but before you <laughs> not anonymously <laughs> obviously before you started working sixty hours a week for Portland. Yeah. You would, you would send me <laughs> photographs once in a while of things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So if you get an opportunity to send me a picture, please do. If you mm -hmm. don't, just let us know. We'll, we'll get this scheduled. I don't okay. even know what our ordinance yeah. is saying. About. That's what I didn't know if they were in our so ordinance, if they were too new. I did have I did have the experience of one uh, in the in the street right of way, and I uh, I registered a complaint to code enforcement, and they had a permit for it, so they had gone through code enforcement to get a permit for having that storage container. It the permit limited. To a certain period of time, it could be there, which was in probably at least two or three weeks. But oh, but this is months I'm talking about. Yeah, we, yeah. we definitely want to look at that, and also the usually the storage container company needs a business license from the city, and sometimes they don't have that. Oh. So we will look at the ordinance. And okay. Try to get some examples, and if any of you see any in the meantime, send us photographs. Okay. <coughs> No, come on, come on. Oh, Betty, this is a this is a study session. Betty. So I, I apologize. Um, this may already be on the agenda, um, future agenda items. Um, the TriMet, um, the amount of money that we're putting into TriMet, and um, how are we going to service our citizens that don't have service right now? And I didn't, I didn't go back and look at the form. I know Nancy's good about sending it out, but I just. Don't want that to drop off. I will look it up and see okay. what, what how it how it's scheduled. Thank you. Okay. Discussion lines. We're going to uh, try city update first. Mayor, You're welcome. Here, I'd like to introduce Mike Kinsey. He's the director for Water Environment Services, and with him is Doug Wa and Mike and Doug together. Uh, work at, at Wes, and as you know, the city is one of the three Tri-Cities, the other two being Gladstone and West Lynn. And I, so I am on the advisory committee, and it's purely that advisory, but the sandwich is really nice. <laughs> and, um, Not nice enough. We go there periodically and get updates from these fellows, and I think, Mayor, it was you that asked um, for them to come and get an update to the commission, and so they're here for that purpose. Mm, good. Good. Well, let me jump in. As uh, David said, I'm Mike Kinsey, and I, uh, I think it was back in the budget process that we were going through back in June when David mentioned that it had been a while since I had come back to Oregon City mm -hmm. and talked about rates. Um, Doug Waugh is essentially both the capital project or the uh, CIP manager for us as well as he does all of our financial planning for both dr districts. So I've asked Doug tonight to kind of come along and uh, kind of run through what we're seeing in terms of trends, uh, wastewater trends and what's behind that uh, in terms of how we build some of those uh, rate profiles and the, and the forecasts. And then we'll get to answering any questions um, that you might have about where the future is taking us and what that might look like to, uh, obviously, to Oregon City. So with that, let me turn this over to Doug and right, we can kind of get into this. Thank you very much. As, as David and Mike both referred to, we're from uh, the department that manages the Tri-City Service District. And the Tri-City Service District provides the wholesale sewage treatment services to the three cities. Uh, you, each city, in turn, adds on a retail cost component uh, for the full sewer rate that each of your customers then pays you each month. So we're a part of your sewer bill, not the, not the full amount. So just to keep that in mind. Um, I want to give you a brief history of the Tri-City District. Uh, 
It's a fairly new district in terms of sewer districts. It was formed in 1980. The facilities uh, were built and uh, started up in 1987. Uh, they were funded by a, federal, a combination of federal grants and a general obligation bond that was uh, paid for by the three cities over time. Mm -hmm. So that funded the entire construction of the capacity built at that time, which was estimated to be about 30 years worth of capacity. And it's about 30 years later, so keep that in mind, too. It's time to start thinking about what we're going to do next. And we'll talk to you about that a little bit as we go on. But all that left for the ratepayers to worry about at that time was paying for the operations of the district, the, the labor, the materials we need, the chemicals, uh, the power, electricity, and so forth. So the rates could be very low. And in fact, they were very low for, for quite some time. And that was fine. Uh, it worked very well for the district for the first 10 years that the district was around. Uh, along about 1998, 1999, some opportunities started to come the way of the Tri-City Service District. Uh, Clackamas County Service District Number 1, which is the sewer district to the north of you, which treats the unincorporated area of Clackamas County, the city of Milwaukee, Happy Valley, and uh, those areas up there, uh, was in need of sewage treatment capacity. And it didn't have enough for its own customers, so it came to you and rented some. It came to the Tri-City Service District and rented some capacity at that time to treat its sewage. Uh, the Tri-City District was rewarded quite handsomely for that uh, that 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 sewage treatment uh, service. You received over six million dollars over the course of the 10 or 12 years that that agreement was in place. Uh, so that, that uh, removed some pressure on the need to keep rates in line with operating costs, if you will. A second opportunity came in 2008-9 when the district, uh, again, when, tri when the service district, one, service district 1 finally got around to building its treatment capacity, uh, it looked to the Tri-City District or the Tri-City facility to build them there and uh, Tri-City Service District allowed that to happen with a one-time payment of $4 million for the right to build its facilities at the Tri-City facility. So you have two, two separate earned incomes that happened for the Tri-City District. Uh, that payment was $4 million, so you had over $10 million in monies that were uh, earned by the district for services provided to Clackamas County Service District 1. And that, again, you know, removed pressure from rates necessarily having to pay for all of operations. You know, for, for, so for those 10 years or 12 years where that interim diversion agreement was going, the, the policy was to raise rates about 3% every other year, just to kind of keep up with things, but not really uh, facing all of the economic pressures that a, a service district uh, faces. So the rates increased, but very, very gradually, and not in line with inflation for quite some time. And then about 2012, when the, 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 uh, the facilities went online, the new District 1 facilities went online, Tri-Cities uh, uh, received its capacity back, and Service District 1 was using the new capacity in combination with Tri-City. And so that earned income stream stopped for the Tri-City Service District. And so you're left to be in a position where uh, revenues and operating expenses were out of line at that time. So the, the Tri-City Advisory Committee I should go on. The Tri-City Advisory Committee in 2011 recommended a plan that was initiated and completed by us over three years that allowed us to adjust rates uh, uh, in a, in a, in a uh, uh, little faster pace, is, is the word I'm thinking of, to get rates caught back up to operating expenses. They were not equal at that time, so we had to catch things back up, if you will. Uh, that's been done this year. Uh, as of right now, operating revenues uh, match operating expenses for the Tri-City Service District, so it's, it's back to where it used to be. Um, and what was done to, to kind of allow that stair-step process was to take some of that $4 million payment and use it to cushion that operating need over that time. There's still some $2 million left of that $4 million payment, which is right now in reserve for capital improvements. Uh, but now we have to think about um, going forward. Uh, as I mentioned before, the district had about 30 years of capacity, and that capacity is getting close to used up. There's some, some, some capacity left, but we have issues particularly related to, to wet weather uh, capacity that, that needs to be addressed. Uh, I think I was just talking to John a little bit about some of the challenges that the city faces in terms of its collection system and the challenges that the other cities face. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a need to address the wet weather issues that we have there. Um, we have regulatory pressures related to our permit. Um, labor, chemicals, and energy never seem to go down. They always seem to go up. Um, and it is time to start thinking about replacing uh, aging, the aging equipment in the facility. The, the facility is 30 years old and stuff is uh, facing a need for replacement. And that's a, si a significant long-term financial need that the district is facing and we have to prepare the district for that. In addition to that, there, are, there is the growth that we need to, to provide for the, for the wet weather. There's future needs for um, solids handling and then there's even further out there will be more needs for dry weather capacity expansion. And when I say these things, 
Uh, dry weather is sort of the typical treatment that we have to have uh, for the district, and that's coming up in, in the distant future. But right now we have some other needs related to the wet weather and, uh, and uh, solids handling uh, facilities that we need. So what we need to do now is move the district along in terms of rates uh, and prepare it for uh, borrowing funds that will allow us to construct those facilities. We can't do that right now. Tri-Cities is essentially debt free. There's no debt. That tells you that there hasn't been any capital, significant capital improvements over the course of the 30 years. We've kept the facilities in good working order, but it's time to start preparing the district for borrowing for future <coughs> capacity needs. Uh, and to give you the long and the short of it, here are the 10-year rate forecasts that we have uh, prepared for the district. Uh, we have been preparing these rate forecasts over the last three years or so. Uh, this is the latest version of the rate forecast that includes some of the next round of, uh, of capacity growth that we need to start building for the district. Um, it also includes projections for increased labor, uh, chemicals and energy, and all the things that go into running a, a treatment facility. It also contains some monies for asset replacement going forward. Uh, the reason you don't see greater rate increases going forward is that we're going to be borrowing a lot of that money. We want to set the district up to be able to borrow that money so you don't have to raise all this cash all at once to do all these things. You borrow the money, you know, you borrow the money, do the capital construction, and then you pay off a little bit of it each year through debt service payments. Doug, do you want to take some questions from the commission during your presentation? Uh, or you want fine. to wait to the end? Sorry, I just was kind of Okay. On. I'm I just wanted them to. Is this for this slide right here for operation only, or is it for capital only? No. This is the complete rate for the uh, for whole, both capital and operation. For the yeah. entire operations of the of the service district it includes capital operations, everything. Okay. Yes. Is what is this twenty dollars per what? Uh, it's twenty dollars per customer per month. We call okay. it an EDU, equivalent dwelling unit, mm -hmm. and that's essentially a single-family home. It's what a customer, you know, that lives in the city would pay us each month. Okay. When you're looking at uh, capital needs for the future, are you looking at any technology changes? Yes. Um, we have just put in probably the highest technology that's available right now, and if you look at what is on our agenda for the next 10 years, what we're doing is we're upgrading to a different type of membrane system. Uh, that's about uh, 10 years out, if I remember right. Most of these right here are, um, the capital that's in here is one, asset replacement, keeping our 30-year-old machine running. Uh, the second piece is what we're calling our phase two, which is addressing our wet weather issues, uh, which is essentially the leaky pipe syndrome that we have to deal with at the bottom of the hill. Uh, and the third piece of that is um, um, the solids handling issue that we have. Um, in that, what if you don't know, what we do is we essentially grow bacteria. It breaks down the organics. We then kill the bacteria and get rid of it as fertilizer. Um, when we did the last expansion down there at the treatment plant, we expanded the liquid side of the house. We didn't expand the solid side of the house. So if you got that, if you got that graph that shows the capacity. No, I don't have the capacity okay. graph. So what, what that means is that we have got average day capacity that we don't have to upgrade until about 2050. Uh, but what we have to do is we have to do a solids handling upgrade by 2032, and we have to do a wet weather capacity upgrade by 2000, I think it's 25 or 26. So we have a series of projects that go into it, and that is reflected in here too. So this is the whole kitchen sink at this point. Okay, well, I have one other question from a previous slide. Sure. Um, you had said that on a previous slide, the, the we were receiving income of six million and four million, and then that went away, and so you had to raise the rates quite a bit, I assume, to make up the difference. Correct. Yeah. Did you guys know that was going to go away? And if you did, why didn't you plan for that so you could always have that three percent and have money set aside? Well, we, we did know that that was going to go away, and so at the time that it came up, we knew it was going to end at about 2011. So in 2011, we, we, uh, we talked to the advisory committee about that, and they recommended a three-year plan that would allow us to adjust rates in that gradual fashion that would get the rates back up to where they need to be when that one-time money was done. Um, did that answer your question? 
Um, kind of, but I mean, I just think we have to be thinking a lot further out in the future. I mean, we have citizens that are paying a lot of money for our water rates, the mm -hmm. sewer rates. I mean, we can't keep putting, you know, raising the rates. We have to be thoughtful about that. I firmly believe that it should be 3% each year, whether you need it or not, because you have operation costs that will go up every year. Your chemicals are going to go up every year. Everything's going to go up every year. So when you don't do your 3% increase, that only puts you behind. That is exactly what happened with the water rates that we experienced in Oregon City. There were years they didn't increase it. So I just, you know, rate payers have to pay so much. And when they get hit with a $32 a month bill, you know, it's just, it's just hard on them. Um, and you're absolutely correct. Um, the rate pressure in this district, um, even when I got here eight years ago, was to keep the rate flat because we had that money coming in. Yes. Once a decision was made by the Board of Commissioners to actually build something up in CCSD okay. number one, we essentially had three years to react to it. Um, so, you know, what Doug described was the way we went about doing it. There's no question they should have been raising rates 20 years ago, anticipating Because you this. can always save that money. I mean, you don't have to spend it just because you have it. You right. could always save it and, you know, build mm -hmm. something or save it for a rainy right. day or when that money goes away, it'll be there. I mean, just because you have it, you don't have to spend it. Right, and this is one of the reasons that we're putting out 10-year rate projections now because this is a district that never did rate projections. It yeah. was year to year. We've been doing this for the last actually four years. Good. Um, and if you look at the numbers themselves, they really haven't changed all that much in four years. They've right. gotten a lot more specifics in the rate itself uh, in terms of the program elements, but the rate actually has been pretty steady here in terms of projections. Okay. So what's Thank your you. plan for sticking with those rate projections? What's our plan? Um, well, actually, we just had this discussion with the board a few minutes ago, which is um, as long as we don't have a change in the regulatory environment, we feel that this is a pretty solid program and we're starting to put the financial design together for how we're going to fund this. Mm -hmm. um, not just the rate piece, but the debt piece itself. Mm -hmm. um, so we're pretty committed to this at this point. Uh, as I said, the only thing that I think may come down the pike that would change this is a change in the regulatory environment. Mm -hmm. And that's something we can't control. No. And that's, that's exactly why you guys need to be thinking. Ahead. Absolutely. And saving money. Oh. Mm -hmm. First, I got, I got one question. Uh, the procurement of West of the Blue Heron uh, side, side on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, where, do the, where do those funds come from? Uh, those were split 50-50 between the two districts. So I presume that's reflected in the increases that we see. No, that is money that's already been paid. So yeah. we have already paid for that money. Okay. But you have to backfill that money, right? No. Where did that come no, from? No, that was out of capital reserves that it's we had. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was an opportunity that came up. We were hedging our regulatory bet with this one. Yeah. Um, there's no question that there's still going to be some costs associated with it, not only cleanup costs out there, but also hooking up that outfall to the Tri-Cities plant. Uh, and those numbers are included in here. Okay. Uh, but in terms of the money that we spent to date, that was all, it came out of reserves. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mike, just to clarify, the reserves, was any of that the $4 million payment that we're no. Doug mentioned? No, that $4 million payment we set aside for rate modulation. I think we've used about half of it. About half of it. So it still sits there. Yeah. And that is something that we can do as we go forward is buy down these rates as we go forward. But sometimes when you buy down the rate, all you do is delay the pain. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying our citizens would appreciate easing into the higher amount. Yeah. I had one other piece of information I wanted to share with you is these were your rates, but what do they really mean in, in terms of yes. competitiveness, if you yeah. will, or quality of service? We have, there, there are not too many other agencies that provide a wholesale sanitary sewer service in the region, but we have three of them listed up here. One of them happens to be service district number one, which has a $30.80 wholesale rate already. Uh, 
uh, Clean Water Services is up in the higher 30s, and Eugene Springfield is over 23. So, over the you know, we're competitive now uh, with those districts, mm -hmm. and even after the you know you look over the next eight to 10 years, we're going to still be competitive with 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 our rates. So I think that's a good story to be, uh, to be sharing with you folks. I guess the question I would pose, if, if the facilities, uh, the seat of Clackamas District 1's facilities did not come here to the, the site uh, where Tri-Cities was, would we, would we still be seeing these demands of, of, of our facility? Yes. 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 You've got, right now, you've got a balance of Tri-Cities, I think it's about 5,800 EDUs or connections, um, which under a moderate growth rate within Tri-Cities, which averages about 220 a year, that gives you about 26 years before you have to look from an average standpoint at increasing the plant. CCSD is not impacting that at all. In fact, if anything, CCSD coming to Tri-Cities has helped offset some of Tri-Cities operating costs because there's a sharing agreement between the two districts splitting the cost of that operating on site. I just see where, yeah. <laughs> I just see where you know, you're using the t uh, 2013 there as the base. We have seen over the last two years, we've seen over an 8% increase and then a 15% increase that puts us to 2013. So there's been a substantial increase. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the subsequent perce uh, percentages 13% increase, 2.5% in 2015, but back up to 12.4%, and down to 8.8%, 9.7%, down to 56 and then going upwards again. Um, it looks like a big, looks like, it looks like a big, what do you call that? So it looks like a roller coaster. Roller coaster. Jigsaw, coaster. Jigsaw, <laughs> roller coaster. Right. And I, I'm, and uh, it, I, I guess I don't understand it. And that is a function of when we're doing our capital projects and we're, when we're anticipating some of these other needs to come online. So one year, if, if we have to be replacing more machinery, you're going to see a higher peak than the next right. year. Um, and what we try to do is this sets the baseline. And as we go forward in the budget committees, we will talk about what makes sense going forward to try to levelize those increases. And, and let me give you an example. This year, I think, was a classic example. I don't remember what the percentage was, but we went in, I think, asking for a buck, a dollar, a dollar raise to the rate. The board looked at it and said, why are we running thin margins in this district? And they're the ones who actually said, let's raise this double what we requested. Um, so, you know, that is the balance that happens uh, every year when we go in. We make a recommendation, but really a lot of these concerns that you have, I know you've got them, but really the board's the one that you really need to be talking to so that going into the next budget cycle they understand where you're coming from. Well, okay. I think we'll have to do that. I think the risk you run is, the, is what we landed that put us in our bad situation yeah. is you're going to have a voter's initiative saying well, yeah. you're going to limit this percentages. Um, we, I, I had an accumulative graph put out. I requested a cumulative graph uh, from 2007 and, until 2021. And uh, that period of time, we're going to see at rates versus a 3%, we're going to see uh, two and a half, uh, spending two and a half times more than we would have otherwise. Right. And, uh, and uh, you know, the public has a hard time. If you're in Oregon I'm City, at, I'm at if you're in the county. Uh, they're not looking out for the city, they're looking out for the county. I think that's true. Well, and that's absolutely true. <laughs> we're looking out for the and district. And it always has been. No. Okay, not the county. And I would like to clarify that because we do not represent the county here. We represent the two districts. Well. Okay. You're not doing a very good job. Well, my, my <laughs> I appreciate my, that. I so. guess it's, I mean, it, it's fair enough to say that try Tri-Cities has no representation on the board. No. None. And our advisory committee has no input at all. Yeah, I mean, it, they, you have advice and nothing else. Or have we right. for years. Right. And that's the way it was set up 30 years ago. It's a joke. Well, Just because that's the way it was set up does not mean that's the way it should remain. 
No, and actually, this group can uh, open up that discussion. And with I, the board I would at like any to time. see us. I, I mean, it. Tr I think we we should bring that up at a work session at some point. I would like to see, eventually, us have a discussion about bringing these back to the cities. See where we as South Fork is. So, right. so, yeah. So I think I think South Fork is an excellent example. And we got three representatives from each city on it. It, uh, it's no longer Tri Cities anymore, Mayor. If I might, and you, it needs you to go asked back. Uh, us to prepare a couple of slides, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if these guys are done, but could you skip to those slides if they're going to talk about that? They're so on that your yeah, I, okay. I started. They're not on the overhead yeah, here, I and I think yeah, it's yeah. I think it would be reasonable for Doug and Mike to be able to see those yeah those slides because it it. Because it we kind of paints alarming. If you picture. haven't seen them, <laughs> if you haven't nobody seen them. likes to be blindsided. Yeah, uh, these are two that we. That shows the cumulative effect of the rate compared to inflation down below, and the dark green line is the actual inflation, and the light green line is projected inflation, mm -hmm. and the dark blue line is actual rate increases, and the light blue line is projected rate increases, and you can see that it's, well, it's a lot different. Uh, between those two lines. Okay. That's what's causing some alarm with the commissioners, and I don't think that's a surprise. Can you uh, explain the that, that, that to that's, I'm having just a slightly hard time. Is that percentages on the? Maybe we can. I can't, I can't maybe we it. can expand it a little bit. I don't know, but there we go. Cumulative percentages. Yep. You can see yeah, if you just go out 10 years, you're looking at an 80% increase in rates. And that's and based upon our numbers? Yes. Okay. You provided us, and then um, we're using a CPI that's estimated, and it's 29%. And I, I, while and I've got the microphone, I wanted to mention just that. Just um, out of curiosity, yeah. CPIW as opposed to an ENR? Wyatt, it's a. Uh, Okay. Okay. One one thing that occurs to me that I wanted to ask about was the, you know, in the city we have learned some hard lessons about rate increases, and we had something even put in our charter that we just recently got removed that capped our rate increases yes. at, at a place where we couldn't operate and much less capital. Um, and you know, it's not unusual for cities and municipalities to have a maintenance budget or a, a rate that funds maintenance, but then have a separate ballot measure or a separate um, bond measure to fund capital improvements. So if you're facing major capital improvements, but you're putting them all in these rates, um, at some point I, I think you at least protect yourself from, from voters feeling like they don't have an input in this if they have a chance to vote. Like, we have to build a new police station between now and 2020, and we're going to I say we have to. We have to if we can convince voters that we need to do this because we have a seismic upgrade that has to occur and our facility doesn't meet those those uh, statutory mandates. So we'll be putting that out and we probably won't wait till the year that it kicks in. We'll be doing that. We've already started preliminary work on it. But at, at some point people will then decide how big that capital improvement should be and it's not uncommon for a city to say, well, we're proposing a, a $14 million police station and the public says, well, no. <laughs> and when they say no, they don't usually tell you how much would be okay. So then you rework your measure and you come back and say, well, we've downsized the police station. We understand that some people thought it was too expensive, so now it's $9 million or $10 million. And at some point on that continuum, we all get the services we're willing to pay for. And so I guess my question is, what part of this do you think should be considered for a separate ballot measure or a separate bond measure as opposed to worked into the rates? Because it's harder for people, I think, to understand what the capital needs are when it's in the rates. Yeah. And actually, I'm not going to address that because that's really an issue for my board. Um, we are running the district, district according to what the charter was. Um, so if indeed you want to suggest changes to that charter or a reorganization of that charter or different representation, that's really a board issue that you have to deal with. And what, what, we, uh, what we do basically is we 
uh, run the district, mm -hmm. and we do the projections of what we need in the future, and we come and make recommendations to sure. them. Sure. And who's on your board? Uh, the Board of Commissioners oh, is the, the governing. <laughs> the Board of Commissioners yeah. is the governing board of Tri Cities as okay. well as CCSD number one. Okay, so it's both. Yes. One of the points you made were wa uh, weather-related issues, and my guess is most of those weather-related issues are problems with infill and in, uh, infill, <laughs> inflow and infiltration. Is that right? Um, yeah, that would be, I think, the good guess. Um, we don't know. We've set $200,000 aside this year in this district to start have discussions with all three cities about where we go be with this. Because if, 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 if some of this increase is trying to deal with the volume you're getting, mm -hmm. it, we're probably hitting it at the wrong end of the scale. I mean, what we should be doing is trying to figure out how to keep the water that, doesn't, that shouldn't be in the wastewater system out of it. Uh, typically, I and I is a balancing act between how much you invest in the collection system and yep. how much you spend on the back end to do it. Uh, we haven't had those discussions, but we have to have those discussions because on our last permit cycle, as I think David was there, the DEQ wanted to make this or Oregon City as well as Westland and Gladstone a co permittee on our permit. Uh, and what that does is that gives them leverage to come up in your system and say, fix this. We fought that. Uh, we know it's going to come up in our next cycle. Because um, so we got to get a little active in addressing this issue. We, we, we would like, and I, I don't think we can do it right away, because although we were able to prevent the, the rollback, it wasn't with a uh, huge percentage in, uh, uh, in, in favor in, in the last election. We would like to start dealing with that question on our side, but if these rates are increasing here, I doubt we could get the leverage to actually pass a uh, increase in our, uh, I'll call it in our maintenance uh, mm -hmm. capabilities to deal with the, in, uh, uh, the inflow and the infiltration uh, issue. Uh, and I think, it's, I think it's very important that we tease that out. It seems like dealing with it on your end is the wrong end to deal with it. Um, as I said, this is going to be a joint effort between the district and the individual cities to try to figure out how to solve this one. And if we don't, DEQ will force the issue. Uh, I have had discussions with Brown and Caldwell. I know that uh, they're on contract with you starting to look at this. My understanding is BNC is also working with Gladstone on this issue. Um, and it is money we've got set aside this year to start that process of how do we figure out what's the correct investment balance here. Mm -hmm. so. I think you've got an idea that we're not very happy. Go ahead and be unhappy. Question today. for our city manager. Do you feel that the board of the um, county commission is um, looking out for Oregon City's best interests? And how have you seen, how effective have you seen, have you seen the advisory committee towards any decisions that are made at the county? Well, I'm one member. Uh, there's three members on the advisory committee. The one time that I uh, objected to a rate increase, it was at the direction of the commission. The mayor prepared a letter. I took it to the county commission and read it. And I didn't receive a very warm reception, I might add. But mm -hmm. that's part of the game, I guess. <laughs> we, we all get paid to have a thick skin from time to time and they were impassioned and and I think they wanted to have their rate increase and so I think if my recollection was mayor the rate increase was around nine or ten percent and yeah. you were asking Absolutely. for it to be about half right. that right so yeah. it wasn't a giant amount of uh, what you were requesting was simply to forestall it over a longer period right. um, so um, it does uh, seem like the advisory committee when we uh, it seems like the information that's presented to us is uh, we, we don't have a lot of information on the background. It's it's a certain amount of information that's given to us, and then here's the decision that has to come from that information. But it's not like we're managing it. Um, I would like the citizens of Oregon City to go back to meetings from 2008 when this commission, or excuse me, not this commission, mm -hmm. past commission made an agreement to enter into um, this this um, new structure with the county. I was adamantly against it for the very purposes I saw this coming. 
Um, one other commissioner who is no longer with us was also adamantly against it. Um, but this commission, the past commission approved it. Right. Absolutely ridiculous. Probably the worst decision we have made as a city. Um, one of the worst um, in recent years. And um, it was not something that we could stop at that time. Um, I have kind of not been fighting that battle because there's a lot of other battles to fight. Um, but it needs to be addressed and and it's in the increase in Oregon City the this this increase on Oregon City is um, basically subsidizing the county and it, it's not right how oh, I'm gonna pose this question just to clarify something I think that was true that past vote how uh, in terms of Tri-Cities who has been the uh, board for Tri-Cities and when did it start it's always been the county commissioners. Yeah. So the vote was not quite what you represent. We had no control. And, right. and I pointed that out at the time. It's okay. always been under the control of the Board of County Commissioners. It may have been well advised that we voted the way you did just to give a protest vote. But the, the point is we had no control, but at that time either. We still so, you, so the point. <laughs> yeah. You're either at the table and having a discussion and hopefully move Well, forward. that was the argument that was made, you know? but it, it, yeah. it sure hasn't helped us much. No. No, I, I, I understand that. Well, and, it, and that's the unfortunate thing about it is, you know, we, we don't have control over it. Mm -hmm. And our citizens are going to see a jump in their bill, and they just, you know, approved not to have the rollback and just 3% increase per year, and then they're going to see a jump, and they're going to say, wait yeah. a minute, what are you doing at the city? You already told us. They don't understand the difference, you know, between the, the sources. Right. So that's going to create a whole other problem. One, uh, Mike, one thing that I would like to point out is it seems like um, staff in this case, in the conversations I've heard, oversimplify the um, the needs and in Oregon City's case there's some growth and there's some I and I but um, th in other parts of the county the growth is much higher and the I and I is comparable maybe less but comparable and it seems like when uh, what, what I've kind of heard either through our meetings or through other meetings at the county is that there's this idea of balancing rates across <laughs> the region so that um, whether you're a CCSD um, um, member or uh, city member that those those oh, rates would can't. would get to somewhere yeah. equal right now there's a difference between the CCSD rate and the tri-city rate there's a huge quite difference, a, yeah, right, right. difference. Right. but there's a reason for that I mean part of it is just the history of the plant and where it's at and those kind of things well the reason right. for that is because CCSD just did a major upgrade of their expansion uh, of their capacity, their capacity. Mm -hmm. for growth mm -hmm. So, so they would, and you know, that's I would four, anticipate that's that, they'd that be major is the four million dollars that you're talking. No, about. no, no. That major was the hundred and forty million dollars mm -hmm. they just invested. Right. In but in this treatment plant. Ninety million was in this treatment plant. The rest of it was in Kellogg as well as pipelines between the two systems mm -hmm. to transfer it. It was a hundred and forty million dollar program. Yeah, and that's in that sense, I don't think it's appropriate to compare that number to our number. Well, we didn't have to build that plan. What we put up here was comparison of wholesale rates. Right. Okay. And CCSD is the only wholesale rate right in this area. MWMC down in Springfield is the other one. Clean Water Services is another mm -hmm. one. Those are really the only comparisons we have to show you on a relative sense where we are. Yeah. And, and not that long ago, uh, Service District 1's wholesale rate was not that different from yours. Mm -hmm. uh, but it became substantially different. It's now $30.80, which is more than we even project for you guys over the 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that is because of just what Mike said. They had to build that $140 million right. worth of capacity. But that's yeah. why I'm for saying it's, for not, it's not a fair comparison. We didn't, we didn't have to have that bill now. Well, but the comparison that we have to use is wholesale to wholesale rate. So. Yeah. And then the comparison becomes, too, when do you guys need to build on for growth? And when does the Tri-City Service District need to build on for growth? And that hasn't happened yet. You know, you're still using the original plan. It would have been fine. All right. I just, I th Mike, I thought I heard you say we have an average day capacity through 2050. Uh, I think what I said at Tri-City's plant, you're about 5,700 EDUs. 
If you divide that by a moderate growth, which we contract with PSU to look at our district, they figure about 220 homes per year or connections per year. The whole district. And that puts you out about 24 to 26 years for average conditions. For Tri City. For Tri Cities, for the Tri Cities district. With okay. most of the growth coming from Oregon City, almost all of it. Right. Of course, uh, our commissioners sit on the South Fork Water Board, so they, they have experience with the utility. It's, it's a different kind of water. Uh, but yeah, it's a clean water. <laughs> it's it's affected by by the same well similar things in chemicals and labor and all that. We run a city. We know what it, these costs are, and and, um, and so the commission at the beginning of every year tells us this is the amount of revenue that we're going to ask you to contain yourself in. These are our priorities. Go budget for that outcome. And so we bring back a budget to them that's already set. And it seems like here sometimes, and I get that feeling on the Tri-City Advisory Committee, that there's the needs are almost uh, unending and overwhelming if you simply do needs-based budgeting where you identify a need or a want, and then you simply adjust a rate to reflect whatever that is. And these rates that are three and four and five times inflation over time will become a bigger percentage of a homeowner's bill that they pay every month. Okay. And I think the mayor is trying to tell you that Oregon City had this history where we had not raised our water rates for a long time. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And then they had some big rate, rate increases. And I think you're trying to avoid that. But these are big every year. <laughs> They're not and just that, big one year. And, and the reason for and, that is for the last 30 years, we have not raised rates in this district. And I, and I, I can't say there is rationale for it. I certainly wasn't here. Mm -hmm. Um, all I can do is focus on what we know is coming down the road right. and plan for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was here, and the recommendations came from the Tri-City Advisory Committee at the time through the years was to, to if, if we could, to keep rates flat for a year and then adjust it the second year. You may want to adjust that, that comment time. a little bit, yeah, though, exactly. because when you said they haven't raised them in 30 years, in 2007 you raised them 3.6, in 2008 9.7, followed by 9.7, Followed by 12.7, followed by 15.6, followed by 23. Well, I guess so uh, that's the cumulative effect. Yeah. It's right there for you to see. So it's not that you haven't raised them in 30 years. Maybe 30 years before the last seven. <laughs> well, but we're not going to make progress here. We're going to have another work session about it. And yeah. and I think this well, topic is over for this evening. I think if, if we can arrange it, I think we need a joint work session with the yeah. uh, Board of County Commissioners. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be great. They're the right people to talk yeah. about okay. this. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. This was very. Yeah, we good. appreciate you coming. I appreciate you coming Thank out. You. Yeah. yeah. This was and, very uh, good. Getting in the bows and arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Thick skin. <so. laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Right. too. Okay. Our next topic. Let's I switch back. Okay. Approval authority for the Citizen Involvement Council's bylaws. Excuse me, Mayor, you're on 3B. Yeah. Oh, I just jumped. Oh, I excuse me. Update on potential resolution about me. <laughs> 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 to Again. Of the city charter to revise limitations on increasing water rates to electors of Oregon City. Well, this sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, similar topic, uh, but you're right, different kind of water. Um, so this is an update on, on a potential resolution. And I say potential because uh, it hasn't been discussed for a few months anyway. Uh, for a ballot measure to amend Section 58 of the Oregon City Charter to revise the limitation on increasing water rates. And um, so this is a familiar topic for you. Just um, a reminder that um, we spent about 18 months yes. uh, to get to the point where we avoided a water rate rollback and uh, we've provided for a 3% per year mm -hmm. uh, rate increase. So I don't want to uh, miss that point first of all so that's uh, again just congratulations with that we're, we're um, happy that that happened yes okay um, we still though have this kind of glaring need for um, uh, a water pipeline replacement program yeah we, we don't have that currently with well we do have some of that but not enough of that going if you remember about a third of our water system has reached the end of its design life um, we we still uh, are seeing with the with the rate increase we're still seeing a water budget of about six and a half million dollars a year 
and our beginning fund balance uh, is holding, uh, that's dropping, it dropped to about uh, half a million dollars. Um, and in 14, 15, we expect to have a water rate contingency of about th uh, $300,000. So we're, we've got a couple years, we think, here in our current budget that um, we know there's a lot on the table right now with regard to a variety of issues, sewer being kind of one of them that we're also looking at. Not, not that we're looking at uh, rate increases right now, but that sewer program, the library is another topic that I know is important to the community. We've talked about it amongst ourselves. We still do um, spend, uh, f for the next couple of years, we're spending about an average of $450,000 for capital outlay. So pipeline replacement projects. This year the main project was Claremont, and we had hoped to do all of Claremont, but we were only able to afford to do half of Claremont. And while that project's on budget and going well, it's not, not that much pipe um, for a uh, program. We, and we also have our in-house water main replacement um, program. And uh, while that's fairly effective, because of the way we have to operate with such a small water crew, sometimes I worry that, that you know, people don't see that as the city being very efficient because we're working one day on the project and then we're getting called away for something else, a water main break or something else. But, but we're still doing that program and we're still on track with what's in the budget with regard to our goals and the kind of programs that we're mm -hmm. going to be issued. And we're still looking for efficiencies and how we maybe could do things differently in the future that might save some costs. But bottom line is, is we're not going to fill that gap with, um, with efficiencies and minor savings. So we still feel like the, um, it's very important for you to understand that um, we still have a need for an annual capital project um, capital program. Um, we think that it was, uh, that number hasn't changed. We haven't gone back and reanalyzed, but if you remember we were talking, you know, some of the, our recommendations are more like an 8% increase and we've got 3% three, three mm -hmm. of that. So there's still this um, kind of liability out there. So we wanted to give you an update. It's been on our work session agenda for a while and um, I thought, well, um, we'll get back, we'll get back to the City Commission with this little update. We, we think based on some of these other competing needs that um, and based on the fact that this it takes a while to put together a campaign that's actually going to be effective that we we should wait to, to look at this and um, project a vote for later in 2015 as opposed to 2014 when um, I know there's commission seats that are going to be coming up and ha having that kind of competing with um, those politics seems like it might be a little messy so we're suggesting that we um, just kind of uh, do the best we can to stay on track with our budget and our budget goals and um, but keep it you know as a thought in your mind that um, in 2015 we're likely going to want to get um, any new city commission up to speed with the problem and um, hopefully they'll come into that knowing that knowing a fair amount about the problem and then look for uh, a, a new ballot initiative for some level of rate increase in 2015. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. For one thing, <clears throat> I'm going to anticipate we're going to be going to the voters for funds for the library, even though they're, even they're, even though they're going to come. As, as we have to, uh, we have to really have to bring in to play, no matter which one it is, some people that are really savvy in terms of m moving a campaign forward. Uh, I, I don't think we were as effective as we could be. I don't have those kinds of skills, and I'm not going to claim to have them. Uh, um, but I go back to particularly time of Alice Norris when she put together quite a team to uh, get, the, cool get the get the uh, Fire District One annexation. Mm -hmm. Very successful, two thirds. Also of the, the oh. school bond. School, school bond, bond as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think. In some sense, it might be good to get somebody that's actually independent of the people that are voted in to r run that, but somebody that's committed to do it and is going to pull <coughs> together people to do it. Uh, I, I, I don't want to see two issues in the same year before the voters, and I assume we're looking for next year perhaps for the getting the bond approval for the library. I don't know if that's true or not. That really hasn't come before us in that fashion. No, um, we haven't brought it forward to you yet, but we were um, planning on next May. Next May. So, and we, and we just, we don't want to do too, too, too many issues, even though one of them is not going to raise the taxes, at least we don't anticipate that would be the case. Uh, I think, I think we have to be judicious, and I appreciate your, 
uh, forestalling that for another year. Uh, my, yeah, my hope is in 2015 with uh, with uh, n the new commissioners, we'll be able to jump right into that topic and start talking about you know when in 2015 right. it makes the most sense. Yeah, well, th I appreciate that, John. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, when we, I'm going to ask you a question. If, when we do that, can we actually have, I would say, two line, two separate line items in in our utility bills? One is operations, and the other is maintenance. Uh, so, that, that's operations is maintenance. What, you mean one capital and one well, more of a pipe replacement program you, item? Or? You you said you could get your operations going on what we had, but you couldn't maintain. Uh, how do you separate those two? When, you said this robot, this this the rollback we had enabled you, us to go ahead and and keep operations going, but we would not have able to have the maintenance. And how do you how do you how do you how do you separate those two? Well, uh, what I'm saying is is w uh, routine operations, whether it be water quality, right, treatment. Uh, you know, regular conveyance, pumping costs, uh, personnel costs, materials and services right. costs to kind of keep things running. Those are covered, and there's some for capital, but not much. Yeah. And we're seeing our beginning fund balances kind of and our contingencies dropping. So as we see those kind of get to a point where Wyatt says, wow, you know, for a fund this size, we should have a much larger contingency at that point, uh, that's when we're, we'll you know, we typically would consume a, a capital budget to, to make, you know, to fill that gap. Right. Yeah. I so guess my question is, and maybe it doesn't make sense, I don't know, but to keep that general operations fund as a separate line item versus the maintenance camp, I will call it capital because capital. that kind of, I mean, if you're talking about replacing big segments of uh, pipe, that's a capital investment. Whether that can be, whether we when, can look at that. Whether that can, whether that can actually be separated out. I mean, if, even if we could separate it out before the election and people could see how little we're actually investing uh, in our in our capital outlay and and the imp impact to that I'll, I'll Might, talk to Wyatt and we'll yeah. see if there's an option there yeah I, I know that that bill's getting kind of more segregated yes. like that I, yeah but um, maybe the, a little more segregation is okay so we'll, we'll look at that it gives a better indication, I think, to the public, you know, how the money is being used. I guess. Anyway, <laughs> well, I want to say if you're looking for uh, topics for your trail news articles, I know you got a lot of them, but that's another one we don't want people to forget about completely. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Did Wyatt want to say anything? Mayor, if it's if it's okay with you, then Mayor and Commission, um, would would just like to comment on that. I think I can speak to how the the utility customer service billing is output. Um, certainly if we designated a portion of the utility rates to capital in addition to what's in operating down the road, that could be separated. The trick now, and I was thinking about the conversation we were just having, um, I know that our biennial budget is established now under our current rate structure. So John, um, I understand that we're, we're settled on delaying any kind of going back to the voters. Having a good sense of how the budget works, the operations are covered and there is a very small amount for capital and our reserves are going down. So in, so if you think about it like this is the things that John just mentioned for operations, we have the budget over the next two years to cover those and a couple of the small projects that he wants to do for capital maintenance. Um, as was discussed in the, the last year or so, there's several neighborhoods and lots of pipelines in one of the oldest cities, the oldest city in the west coast, right, uh, in Oregon. There's lots of pipelines that are, um, you know, 90, 100, John can tell probably plus. older than that. Mm -hmm. And we have zero uh, capacity to fix those moving forward. So this is what we're talking about as far as the capital piece. Mm -hmm. um, we, couldn't, we couldn't implement a system to, to split the bill now because we would have to pick, we would have to look at each dollar we're spending on capital and each month bill that to folks and that'd be impossible to do. The only way that we, we could do um, a split billing would be if later on we go to the voters and say, in order to replace your lines over time, please allow for this percentage increase that would be specifically designated for that. And in that case, we could say all of the revenue that comes in for capital is what we're going to bill you for now, if that makes any sense. 
It, it does because because it then gives an indication to the voter that these monies are in fact committed to capital. That it's mm -hmm. not going to be used for. Something yeah, I else. think that would help to give the voters some assurances that their operations are sticking right in there with inflation, kind of similar to the discussion we had now, but we're at 3% increases for the operations. So if there were something in, to, in addition to that that was approved, we could allocate that specifically for capital replacement of those aging infrastructure lines, and we could probably make that pretty clear on a bill. Okay. Anything else on the topic at this point? We're gonna kick it, kick it down the line to Rocky and to Carol, <laughs> and maybe others. <laughs> and, okay, now to the draft city commission meeting schedule. No, no, yeah. to the uh, to the CIC uh, bylaws. CIC, yeah, the CIC bylaws. Um, okay. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Tonight you have before you the question of whether the City Commission should be the approval body for the CIC bylaws in the same way that you are for the bylaws of all the other boards and committees. So in preparation for this discussion, um, we looked at the beginnings of the CIC and would like to ensure that you have all the information that you need in order to make um, have a good discussion on the matter. So just very briefly, um, the CIC was established in 1977 by the City Commission and the, the policy itself that established, it, it established the purpose of the CIC and it's, it's very short and I'd like to read it to you. Uh, the CIC Council shall serve as the advisory body, body to meet the City of Oregon City's citizen participation goal as stated in the land use policies for Oregon City. The goal reads, provide an active and systematic process for citizen and public agency involvement in the land use decision making for Oregon City. The CIC Council also serves as the officially recognized citizen advisory committee to meet land use uh, goal number one. That's the stated purpose of the CIC. Okay. If if our records are accurate, the bylaws of for the CIC were developed for the first time in January of the year 2000. And the bylaws stated the whole purpose of the CIC. Well, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just briefly, um, all of the bylaws um, that began in 2000 as well as all of the revisions up through today uh, pretty much say uh, something similar to this. The purpose of the CIC will be social and civic. The CIC will serve to promote, coordinate, and implement various aspects of community involvement through citizen participation. Um, other, other things say to pr promote the quality and livability of neighborhoods and community and to facilitate communication among its members. So that's basically what the bylaws are saying is the purpose of the CIC, basically that it's social and civic. Um, tonight, however, the, the bigger question is not really who should approve the bylaws, but whether the CIC is operating according to its original purpose. Mm -hmm. When um, Keep in mind that when the Two Rivers Neighborhood Association was created right. earlier this year, mm -hmm. they took over that land use responsibility yeah. that the CIC had taken on in the downtown area. So the CIC no longer has any land use responsibility because the neighborhood associations serve that purpose. Right. So staff is recommending that the commission first discuss the purpose of the CIC before addressing the approval authority of the mm -hmm. bylaws. <laughs> and if the if the commission decides to to be the approval body of the bylaws, they Will be you'll be actually changing the purpose of the CIC mm -hmm. that was established originally back in 1977. So mm -hmm. it's pretty important to mm -hmm. consider all of that in your discussion tonight. I'm going to ask a question. Did the neighborhoods associations also come into being in 1977? I don't think so. You recognized the neighborhoods one by one right around 97, right. 98. And that's that's when I first, more or less, first came on. Uh, mm. A little bit, a little bit after that, mm -hmm. but. The neighborhood associations then I think effectively were beginning to take on the responsibility of the CIC. That is, it, 
Mm -hmm. If you go back to 1977, you're going to a period where we didn't have a great deal of growth in the city, and you're, particularly you're from right. 1980 to 1990, almost none. Right, and the records are actually really sparse yeah. <laughs> between 77 and like 99. Right. To, to a large extent, land use policies, I think, are best dealt with in smaller regional areas, which the, na na which the neighborhood associations mm -hmm. address. That is, it is a true neighborhood issue when you've got a development that's coming in about five or six blocks from you. Um, so um, we, we've been referring to the Citizens Involvement Council as an umbrella organization, but it's not serving in that way in terms of the original land use uh, direction that was given to the CIC. And uh, my understanding, the neighborhood associations took on that land use responsibility. That's correct. <coughs> So, uh, um, oh, so, go ahead. Um, my question is, I can understand land use being under neighborhood association, but there are some land uses that are right on borders, mm -hmm. and so it should not be exclusively exclusively uh, the, the issue for one neighborhood, because it will be affecting more than mm -hmm. one neighborhood. And so, where do you delegate that authority? It would seem like it would go back to the CIC. Well, the date, but the point is the bylaws don't address it. it. You know, I've been trying to figure this out, and it sounds like the original, um, like you said, of the, the CIC, the intent was for land use. So how did the neighborhoods be, how did they kind of get melded into that instead of it being two separate things? Does that make sense? Well, it refers to the neighborhoods in the original charter here. Yeah. The nine neighborhoods. But the intent of the land use body being the CIC and the functions of the neighborhood um, are separate. But they've been melded together. Yeah. Because the officers of the neighborhood associations decide who's going to be their representative for the CIC instead of the CIC picking its own representatives from different areas. Okay, let's just say it's true. And it's complicated things a little. Well, the neighborhood's not ne necessarily as. Uh, appointed by the chairman of the neighborhood it says you know the neighborhoods r identify the person it doesn't say how they're identified okay. right so um well they have a standing committee here that is a land use standing committee in this document on the current um, changes the on the current document current document mm -hmm. This is, I'm looking at the draft CIC bylaws, 2013 revision. Okay, what page are you on? Oh, I don't know. I went back. You <laughs> lost it. Uh, okay. Therefore, I lost it. But that's what I was looking at. And w look at look at uh, look at committees. Look at committees. Mm -hmm. What section is that? Um, maybe, oh, maybe I was still on there. Article. Uh, it's Article Six. Okay. Page. Five. It's in it, it, uh, in page what? Yeah, let's see. It's on page five. Okay. So it hasn't. It refers to it as a committee. I'm not sure what beyond that it uh, discusses. Well, um, this is my question. Okay, so um, a few years ago, the CIC um, was no longer, it was um, when their coordinator position left, that kind of fell apart. Neighborhoods kind of drifted us away. And so there wasn't, 
you know, there wasn't any kind of an organizational thing. So if we, if CIC doesn't do the land use for the neighborhoods that are dysfunctioning, dysfunctional or not active, I guess, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be kind of where we would go for CIC? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they, like right now, Tower Vista, we still don't have Tower Vista, right? It's still part of McLaughlin. I don't know if Tower Vista will ever come back, but um, it's been hooked to McLaughlin. So if if more if if the neighborhoods go through the you know dysfunctional falling mm -hmm. apart mm -hmm. disband disband, mm -hmm. then the land use should go to the CIC. Mm -hmm. But at this moment, we have a lot of activity with our neighborhoods and they are very capable of making their own decisions for what's gonna go in their neighborhoods. So, I mean, right now we're very strong neighborhood association. So I would say at this point in today's CIC meetings, I don't think land use is a role that they play in my opinion at this on um, on this day because neighborhoods want to know what they what the building is going to be and do they want it in their neighborhood i mean that's you know if you're exactly right if it comes four blocks from my house i want to know and if it if it involves two neighborhoods both neighborhoods should be able to voice their opinion so i don't know I don't know if that muckies the water a little bit more, but I mean, right now our neighborhoods are going strong and I hope they never disband and I hope they always are strong, but to plan for the future. The history has shown that um, the CIC has uh, existed and then it became inactive and then it yes. be, it existed for some time again and then was act inactivated yes and then it was so that's kind of been the hi the history um, right it, if if I mean the CIC for that matter could even operate independently of of the city you're it, correct if it, if yeah. it wanted if, if it you wanted, wanted to, to. absolutely um, just as, as a uh, you know, right now it's an instrument of the city. Yeah. But it could become a non-instrument of the city and, and still operate. And, and, it, and, and then, it, for that matter, they wouldn't have to follow public meetings laws and right, right. You know, um, operate just uh, using whatever bylaws they wish. Yes, you're correct. It could have their own. They could have their own private party mm -hmm. and not invite us. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's your words. <laughs> yes, that's my words. Yeah. So, what does the CIC feel about? Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. Alice if you want to come forward and s say anything. <laughs> and introduce, and introduce yourself in terms of who you are, what position you hold. My name is Alice Watts, and I currently chair the CIC. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true we don't have land use issues much anymore because of the two rivers. They pretty much absorbed what we were handling. Right. Mm -hmm. But I don't see that as the only function of the CIC. And when we created these bylaws, in fact, the purpose that we indicated on that page one was taken from the city. Right. We wanted to be in sync with what the city thought we were supposed to be doing. Yes. And we get a lot of value from coming together and sharing what each of the neighborhoods is doing. We also get a lot of value from what the city provides for us in line with presentations that come forward to us. Yes. We feel like we have a great both-way com uh, communication going on, two-way, mm -hmm. I should mm -hmm. say. So to hang your hat and say, well, since you have no land use issues anymore, you have no purpose. I think that's an inaccurate statement. I totally agree because I think the CIC is far more involved than just land use. And we have a strong CIC right now. We have very good representation yes. from each one of the neighborhoods and I think we're working well together. And Was I think to have a seat again? No, they're still mad. Okay. Well, they'll... they'll <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the plan, the short of it. Yeah. 
it happens. They took their toys and went home. So, but we have encouraged them numerous yeah. times to come yeah. back, and I think they will. Mm. Yeah, they sometimes will. it takes a while to mm. mend some fences. So I've always said that I felt that the CIC could be far more than just land use. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be a valuable institute for us and the city and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's just a great voice to kind of go to and figure out what the temperature of the water is to pass mm -hmm. something. And, well, I will. I will talk about my irkness. <laughs> You're more than more an irkness. More than a year ago, you had one of the people get up there and go on for probably about fifteen or twenty minutes about me violating the uh, uh, what was it called? If you campaign for something, the election laws. Election laws. Election, election laws. Hmm. You mean at your meeting here when no, we had the CIC. The at the CIC Atta meeting. Attacked, attacked me at a CIC meeting and nobody oh. called them on it. It became a political forum. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't even. Was, That's what we I don't want it to meeting? be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was yeah. I an officer? No. I don't know. This, no. this is more than a year ago. I don't know if you were an officer, no. but you sure didn't hold this position. No, Alice, you weren't even. No, you weren't involved at that I time. I sure don't remember no. that. I'm yeah. sorry. That's that's. Yeah. And I'm that is a concern that I. That's a great comment. Yeah. It is a concern to me that it becomes a political organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That it becomes yeah. a huge political animal. Mm -hmm. So I don't know kind of how to keep that. Electioneering. I was I was accused of electioneering. But well, separated. Yeah, I, I do like the overlapping of information though, and the saturation that it gives to the public. It's televised, so they can see a lot of information that's brought out to the neighborhoods. Again, is repeated through the CIC, and I think it is valuable for that as far as communication goes. But I do share the same concern with it being really political, and um, you know, not. We need to have, make sure we have good communication between the CIC and the commission as the policymakers that, that we can you know, do that and do what we're supposed to do. So I would agree with that. I always try to take the positive approach that nobody's out to get anybody. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Until you may learn well, differently. I've, 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 I've heard, I've, I've heard you, you're in a stereotype ship. <laughs> But in, in, in uh, my final comment, I would say that if the neighborhood associations have value, then so does the CIC, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we are just a larger version of right. that. Right. You now, really we don't have that. to meet here at the city mm -hmm. commission offices. However, you may, I think you just said it, Carol, mm -hmm. is that uh, because we're televised, right. I had one of my neighbors whom I've rarely spoken with come up to me and she says, oh, I saw you on television and I wanted to share this with you. And mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the whole purpose of neighborhood associations mm -hmm. and CIC is to get people talking to it's one outreach. another. outreach, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, that is true. I mean, it's a benefit that neighborhood associations yeah. don't have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Because they are not televised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's up to you whether you want to let us continue to meet here, but I think the the television capabilities really do enhance what we do so that people know yeah. that we exist. Yeah, no, I understand that. I don't know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. So I guess I'm not sure kind of what, where do we go from here? Well, I think that the important point is that, that, that the commission needs to identify what the purpose is of the CIC right. what you want the purpose to be because it's it's not according to what the policy of the CIC originally set it out to be and so if if you just want it to be um, social and civic then that's that's fine if you have other other um, purposes for the CIC then those are discussion items that you you'll you'll want to you'll want to look at their bylaws very carefully and see if you right. want to word that differently. Yes, um, have input on that, and then of course make the decision whether you you want to be the approving body for them. I I think that if we look at the purpose that they've stated here in section two, I'm I'm very good with that purpose. It does not only say social and civic, but it says it serves to advise the city commission, the planning commission, mm -hmm. and other planning. Mm -hmm. I mean, this covers a wide variety of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And I'm I'm very good with that purpose. Mm -hmm. I guess the only thing that could be added, just as a possibility, is 
and land use just to spell it out so right. it does include the original purpose but yet it's grown well land use so much more. was not the only original purpose there was transportation and other things in there too so but well, I think it's covered now. Yeah. If you read the no, purpose no, of the original, and read the yeah. purpose, it, it was yeah. just this is, the current, this is the current draft. Uh, in, in there were the, there were three things in the original. Are there? Mm -hmm. okay. Mayor, might I add if if you are going to add because one of the things I want to try to avoid for our staff is duplicating our, our effort. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. if you're going to have land use in there, you might want to couch it in terms of. In the event there isn't a functioning neighborhood, that's what I was going to say. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, Absolutely. If so there covered. is not, so the, so covered. that there isn't a. Right. Basically, we do it twice. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. 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 And the difficulty if you had this, if you had, how you say? It. Of course, this perhaps addresses uh, Commissioner yes. Ross' concern, but you have a disagreement between the CIC, CIC and, and the Neighborhood, the neighborhood yeah. Association that's right. coming mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. But I would think if there's if there's a a, a border issue, you'll have probably. Both, both neighborhood yeah, associations, right, right, or all right. three neighborhood associations, or whoever's involved coming right. forward, mm -hmm. and so I'm, I'm not sure that's a major concern. And the CIC has been pretty political for the last couple of years, so I'm hoping they can kind of get a handle on that, maybe. So that leads to the question of if you folks want more time to think of this over, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't think there's a reason why we couldn't offer that to you. Um, you could well because we get back to that point of who wants to be the approving body of the right. bylaws do you want to have them do that alone or do you want to do it or do we we have a resolution actually on the book so whenever that's sorted out we have to go back and straighten our resolution out so that it matches whatever you decide yeah um, I think I think it, that's probably a good idea to take a few more moments to think about this and people. and if you're concerned about it for example it being political you could even assuming this is assuming uh, and it's a big assumption i think that you want to be the approval authority for the bylaws and want it to continue to be an instrument of the city if that's the case and you look at the bylaws and you're concerned about certain things about it becoming too too much of a political organization then you can actually put some language in there or suggest language in there that says well that isn't the purpose of it it's actually these things because and you know they are meeting in a city um, facility so we don't want them to violate any of the city's political rules right yeah we we can use city resources and facilities for political activities by our elected officials that that's you okay uh, <laughs> so if we have a, a you know because we do have staff people that support that so let's say yes. we'll just use our recent ballot measure because yes. there was lots of talk about yes. that so let's say the water rate rollback the citizens involvement committee thought it should be passed and so if we had that on television and they were advocating <laughs> for it and we had staff resources going toward that effort that could That'd be, be kind of a problem. slippery place for us to be yeah. yes yep. and and so you want to keep your politics uh, as much as possible among your elected folks right mm -hmm. and then you're that's a safe harbor if you will so I would like to see something like that in the bylaws I don't know I don't know if it's in there but something that says you know you're in a facility that needs to be neutral that Driven. So, Mayor, if you if you want more time, because it feels like this is sort of your first exposure yeah. to this, and I don't want you to make a snap judgment or feel pressured to make decision tonight. But there's two things to think about. Number one, well, actually three. Number one, what is the purpose? And it does seem like there's some common thought that you're sharing about the purpose. The second thing then is, if the purpose is still going to be a public purpose, a bona fide public service committee, then the second one is probably leads you more in favor of having some input on the bylaws right. mm -hmm. and then the third one is what is that input and I know you're all taking notes and listening to one another but I would counsel you to take take a couple of weeks until we can bring this back for another discussion and a work session mm -hmm. and keep your notes and keep that information we'll bring this back uh, if there's a consensus around certain issues tonight let's please give us that right. direction right. But if there isn't, then we'll bring it back in in the near future. I, I guess one of the concerns in the purpose is just the first sentence. The purpose of the CIC will be social. Yeah, it, that's it, it. That you know, city supports certain social events, all right. But that's it's not the functioning of the city government. And uh, civic 
Yes, but I don't know about social. It's yeah, a very it's, broad word. It's I was wondering about word. that word too. Yeah. 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 Civic's actually pretty broad because yeah, I'm, it is. Yeah, it is. Well, I'm, I guess I'm in it, I, I, so I, I can tell you. You know, <laughs> civic I, and social. <laughs> if right. if its purpose could be focused more in terms of what those three standing committees mm -hmm. do. I mean, they're standing yeah. committees for a specific reason. You don't you don't have a standing committee on social events, and you don't have a, <laughs> you know, those standing committees. I think are. Or what makes the guts of, of what a CIC probably should be from our our willingness to support it, and I guess that's that's probably what I would almost like to see the the focus be of the purpose. If if we're to I mean if we're to endorse it, that doesn't that doesn't mean you can't have another group that's an offshoot of yours that isn't a city group and can do almost anything it wants. Well, I was going to say neighborhoods can do almost anything. That's true. They don't. They they're not in a city facility. I mean, we support by sending out a postcard announcing the neighborhoods. But yeah. I mean, neighborhoods are perfect for political arena. Mm -hmm. So the standing committees are transportation, public safety, and land use. Yeah. is what's listed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 really fits. Say, did you say transportation? Because mm -hmm. you do yeah, have your tax. Transportation, yeah. public safety. You want to make sure that it's consistent with what the tax is doing. Yes. Well, yes. No, I mean, it, I don't think it's inconsistent with the tax is doing, and they might hit certain points where they want to testify before the transportation advisory committee on a particular issue. Uh, I, Back to duplication, I think it's just we spend a lot of time on those committees too. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and those committees like to be the. You know, they like to be the recommending body. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, yes. all these, it's trying to get all these committees to work together. So yeah. as long as that's, I think that's the understanding. But I, I, ideally, I would like to see such a, such a committee here when they have issues to take it to the Transportation Advisory Committee. Uh, what I don't want to see is them coming before us without taking it first to the Transporta Transportation Advisory Committee. That would be a concern of mine. Uh, mm -hmm. we've, we've got a body that deals with those issues, and, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a open to the public, and uh, so the mechanism for really them those committees where we have a standing mm -hmm. advisory committee, mm -hmm. the mechanism of, of bringing issues yeah. uh, to us is through the advisory committee, and and that could be written into the bylaws. Yeah, it seems like it could be written into the bylaws. Could, could I yeah, come on forward, sure. You can just you can stay right here. <laughs> you can join. <laughs> just join us, Alice. The the standing committees that we listed there are indeed a representative to TAC, to the chief's advisory, and then we did have a land use chair until we had no more land use. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But I like Betty's idea that should one of the neighborhoods fold, we would pick up their land use yes. concerns. Yes. Yes. So we're perfectly capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. I, would, I, I guess I guess I missed it uh, somewhere. But Tower Vista going into the Laughlin neighborhood seems about one of the worst fits I could think of. I know, but <laughs> they, they were. No, nobody else wanted them. Uh, Tower Vista disband, <laughs> and McLaughlin said, "You can join they're us." They're very accommodating. Well, they're, they, you may be accommodating, but Tower Vista, you know, came into existence within the last 20 years. I know. And McLaughlin's been here for. Ever. Well, no one can say that. <laughs> I'm sure so, too. <laughs> but, I, I don't know if anybody has approached anybody in Tower Vista to see if they want to form their neighborhood back, or do they just want to? I think there was an effort made okay. year, a few years I, back, gonna, but not recently. You're going to see okay. those things up and flow. I mean, there mm -hmm. there are neighborhoods that just simply went out of existence, and yeah. part of it, yeah. we had. Uh, uh, the Thayer Neighborhood Association, but that represented a very small subdivision yeah, yeah. Uh, that has has a potential probably of splitting off eventually from maybe it is in the Caulfield, whatever is in the Maple Lane area. Who, who represents Maple Lane? You know offhand that area. That would be Caulfield, wouldn't it? I would think Caulfield. Yeah, think so. It's going to it's going to eventually be a big enough area that probably it will want to have its own neighborhood association. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't. There were just. I don't think there were more than about 40 households in the Thayer Neighborhood Association. It just was a subdivision that created one, and it's gone. There's something else like the Tower Vista, that's a larger area. 
but yeah. th I think you're going to see ebbs and flows. I mean, yeah. in interest and then non-interest, and then somebody picks up the ball again. That's why I wouldn't want the land use to go away completely, just because mm -hmm. I think it's important that citizens look at the, the, right. the land use issues. I would, wouldn't mind commenting about your previous conversation about the purpose, the purpose of the CIC being social and civic. We kind of chuckled at that too, but we took it right from a document that the city created. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so then we thought, well, we are kind of social <laughs> because you want people to be friends. You want yeah. people to work, learn to work mm -hmm. together. And so there's the social aspect. And I thought, well, maybe that's what yeah. the city had in mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I, I guess I mean that that's an outcome of a I think a well or a well functioning committee mm -hmm. is that is that they, there will be social bonds that occur from it. Okay. But I don't think that's the purpose. No, certainly. So, no. And we and talked about taking that word out, and we thought, well, we want it to match what the city thinks we're doing. We took it from one of your documents. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was at least, like, 15 years ago. Yes. No, that's, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. and indeed, Nancy, now that you've <laughs> said that. I'm, the, uh, I, I, I'm yeah. not going to be sensitive to that. I was there 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. You can blame it all on me. But I okay, don't. it's Doug's fault. Oh, <laughs> it's Doug's fault. So, so, it sounds like yeah. a consensus. Yeah. The, um, yes, it's the policy <laughs> handout that you've prepared for this agenda dated December 1977. There are a number of things in this document that are not happening. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be updated anyway. Uh -huh. Yeah. I c agree. Yeah. So what we will do then is um, we will take the bylaws and I'll, I'll talk <laughs> to Katie and, and ask her if she can go through the, the, the current draft. Right. And, and just point out what has been changed from the previous draft. Mm -hmm. And we can mm -hmm. compare it with the, um, the 1977 policy and then just uh, kind of highlight some things so that you know what you're looking at mm -hmm. and you're reviewing for yeah. the next work session. Yeah. Well, let's make a suggestion. I don't know if it'll work or not. Um, if if there's a way that you can structure your me meeting such that issues that are coming before us could come at the towards the beginning of the meeting, uh, if it's possible, do we have to have a staff person here for the for the whole time? For the CIC? Yeah. Uh, yes. You, and it's required that we have a staff person. Well, it's highly advisable. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see well, why. Like, Especially with the like recording that. of the yeah. meetings and if there's yeah. any votes and yeah. that sort well, of that, thing. But that was the point, whether the, whether the agenda could be set so issues that are decision issues could be put forward and perhaps if there are other things that are just basically a discussion would not necessarily require a staff person. Mayor, are you, are you sort of suggesting like there's official capacity things that would be on the agenda that are actual decision-making items versus the just beginning. more of the civil, the, the more of the <laughs> so, social, social. I mean, th <laughs> things, that, things that you could talk about in, in, in the hallway that aren't necessarily action items? Yeah. Like, Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like, there has been some concern. Like, like, like accusing the mayor of electioneering. That, that could occur. <laughs> that could occur at the end of the meeting. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, that again. <laughs> well, we're always trying to conserve our staff time, and uh, so, so, so that's something you might give a little thought to, even if, if you could build in a, a meeting structure in here that wouldn't wouldn't necessarily. We've actually burned out some staff members on on this, on the, you know, yeah. because of their time and so forth. Right. But if you know, if if within the first hour of the meeting. Uh, action items are, are there, and uh, and the, the the question I was there's nothing that says we can't have a, a meeting here, and that requires a staff person being here. Well, it would be you have the members of the public in yeah. the building that are trusted individuals, of course, but you know generally there's a staff person in the building when there's meetings going on, so. Someone would have to be here, I think, to make sure the building's locked up and right. um, the you know the, the electronics are started and stopped mm -hmm. and you know so forth. So someone would most likely have to be here. The yeah, whole it wouldn't time. necessarily have to be a person that's there. I, I don't, I don't know that Katie facilitates the meeting in any way. No, she so helps a great deal, but she does not facilitate. So, it. so I mean, those she, those she signs. She takes are, the vote call. Yeah, so so that that's what I'm talking about the action the action mm -hmm. items and so forth that those things could be put on early. We would not not necessarily have to have a. Uh, that would mean our pres our presenters would come later. Then yeah. we generally we try to accommodate our presenters by putting them first, mm -hmm. and then in fact we can excuse them. We'll give it a little them. bit of thought. Anyway. Yes, certainly. Yeah. 
Yeah, they have been good about moving public works to the front of the agenda. So <laughs> if I want to leave early, I can. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but Nancy, I just want to clarify one thing. Um, but did you say the CIC is an instrument of the city? It's considered yes, an it instrument is. of the city. Mm -hmm. Yes. So and all CIC where? officers are covered under the city's insurance. Right. Neighborhood so associations are not. So that would warrant needing a staff person because they're yes. an instrument of the city? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's um, kind not, of a well, requirement it, or not Not really? necessarily a requirement, but I, I think it's just uh, for logistic purposes and uh, for, for the staff person to be in the know of what's going on okay. and be able to, um, you know, function well afterwards and I, I think it's pretty essential. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item 3D. Yes. Draft City Commission meeting schedule. Right. So um, attached to your agenda this evening mm -hmm. is the 2014 City Commission meeting calendar. And we like to try to get this done in advance so that we can start scheduling rooms and um, make sure everything is set for the next year. If you've had a chance to look over it, um, there's not a whole lot on here to, that stands out other than the commission retreat yeah. is scheduled for January 25th. And we wanted to confirm that that's okay with all of you. And will it be here? Um, no, we have an off-site location okay. scheduled. Um, and then the OCCIT grant review and Metro Enhancement meetings are on there in March and May. And I think that there wasn't any, any other um, mm -hmm. holidays that we had to work around much this year. So um, if that's pretty well good to go, we will schedule it as is then, unless there's some concerns. Looks good to me. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to make a suggestion that if people want specific um, goals, uh, we'll call it semi-revisited, uh, be sure to get that information to staff ahead of time. Oh, sure. And that's a, a point that I wanted to clarify. We we have retreat in there, but as you know, we went to a two-year budget, so we're doing a full-scale retreat that takes a lot of your time <laughs> and staff time every other year. And then the off years, like this one, we're going to have a midterm update. So right. we'll let That's you know these changing. are what you, we've accomplished so far. These are yeah. some things we're going to be working on in the subsequent year. But it won't be the same day and a half long right. commitment that I'm you just saying right. if somebody wants something specifically earmarked to come up in the in the meeting to be sure to get that information Absolutely. to you. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go back to the agenda. And that brings us, I guess, to the, uh, is that the same thing as draft meeting uh, schedule? C city manager's report, city number manager's four. City manager's report, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, at one of the meetings, and I think this is a meeting when I was in Boston, uh, one of you brought up the idea of a public restroom downtown, and I'm thinking it might even have been around the elevator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't here for the discussion, but I, I wanted to make sure I brought that back to you. Um, my, it might be an assumption to make, and I didn't really want to make it, that um, because that property might come up for sale through, the bank now has possession of it, and so I'm expecting that they're going to list it at some point, and we've made mm -hmm. that public that we have interest in that property. So it might be more timely to bring up <laughs> that issue when we talk about the property again if we do sure yeah. or is there something more you want us to do I just want to make sure mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so we'll bring that back that discussion item back up when we meet an executive session probably when we talk about that property again sure. that's okay. a perfect restroom spot <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring up something else about restrooms too uh, I think we've all sensed an increase in the homeless population mm -hmm. here. <laughs> Every one of our public restrooms gets locked up at night. Mm -hmm. I've gone, yeah. when when I when it's spring, I tend to go out and jog for three or four weeks. And then, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then you stop. <laughs> but I, I've, That's a I've, long I've, jog. I've, 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 that is a hard one. <laughs> 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 <You're stuck. laughs> 
<laughs> it keeps going and going. Well, I come back. I come back exhausted. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a real, fast, not a real fast job. You sleep. No, I'm not. That's true too. But you know, I once I went down to actually it was John Storm's uh, uh, restroom and uh, it was open, but I saw some feces right in front of the. Yeah. Room. And I think the, the person, whoever was there, had an intent of trying to use a facility. And there wasn't one available. I've seen it on the promenade. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, yeah. And, uh, and I'm not sure all of them would try to make a use of a facility right. that were available. <laughs> no. But I think in this case, somebody <laughs> might have been desperate, tried to get to a facility, could not use it. And I, I don't know how you do that, but I think at, at some place in our city, it would be nice to have a 24-hour facility. I agree. Now, it may end up with a lot of graffiti and other things, but on the other hand, there's an element of dignity that's involved there. And so I, it might be worth giving that I, some kind I of I might picture. even be inclined to, uh, boy, I've been through this with every manner of, yeah. uh, in every city I've been in, <laughs> actually. Yep. And they, they uh, well, I won't tell too many stories, but w once upon a time, one of these cities replaced, I think it was 18 toilets in a three-year period, and they finally, I finally convinced them, you need a prison-proof uh, fixtures in there. And we, we got them. I happen to know about those, because not because I was an inmate, but because I was a police officer. <laughs> I had been in some of those institutions where it's a pretty bulletproof, if you will, um, facilities. Uh, but I think the, the important thing is going to be able to figure out the location and then figure out the budget to pay for it. And mm -hmm. I would almost say that and you'd maintaining. be better off, you, you might even be better off looking at some sort of a portable, something like that that can be Turnover? contracted out, number one. Oh, and, and so there isn't a lot of ongoing costs for, for the city. It's whatever that contract would be for yeah. that period of time. Yeah. And then... Also, when you build a permanent facility, you have to hope that's the right spot. And with these mobile facilities, you can kind of move them around. Now, and some of them, mm -hmm. <laughs> they've improved the way they look, some of them. Some of them still look like they always looked. Mm -hmm. But there are some options there is all I'm getting at. And um, we could look at yeah. what they would cost and kind of investigate that a little bit more and get back to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Uh, um, we have those portable ones down at uh, Sportcraft Marina. Are those 24 hours? Well, I mean, we don't have them, but Wait, yeah. they're provided well, down there. Scott might probably knows. We, uh, those were a condition of our prior contract with right. Sportcraft Marina. And they're not And in. they, um, Are they negotiated gone? with the city that they requested right. that those be removed from the current contract that we mm -hmm. just passed right. not too long ago. And, and the, the city uh, received, reciprocated with that request. Right. So right. We, don't have those anymore. Okay. Now we do have the shelter there, so if it were put into our budget that we would want to put those back in there and have them serviced, you know, usually it's a weekly service kind of a thing. Right. That's a possibility, but. Uh, yeah. And unless it's a daily service, you do have, if it's a weekly, for example, you do have the possibility that somebody won't be very respectful on how they use the facility. Yeah. And then for for that intervening service period, yeah. someone might have an unpleasant experience. Yeah. And that happened, I know that's happened lots of times in the parks, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, next I wanted to let you know that Tony uh, Conkle was here a few minutes ago and he left because he went over to the City of Gladstone City Commission meeting tonight to give a presentation on the Willamette Falls Legacy Project. Mm -hmm. Great. So we're doing that outreach to make sure our neighbors in the region are also informed about what we're doing there. And we're trying to take the presentation to them, not just assuming that they're always going to come to one of the many public outreach events right. that we've done. I um, also want to remind the commission that the open house for the Will the next open house for the Willamette Falls Legacy Project is October 10th uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Museum of the Oregon Territory. That's this Thursday. Yes. Mm -hmm. October 10th from 6 to 8, 8 p.m. at the Museum of the Oregon Territory. And then last but not least, I, um, you know, planning, <laughs> we used to do a survey in Grants Pass, and every year the results were the same. The police department was great, and the planning department was terrible. And it wasn't because one was great and one was terrible. I think it was more related to the service, that the, the kind of service that they provided was, <laughs> was difficult. And we had a, a lot of builders in the community that wanted planning to be faster and more efficient and not do inspections and those sort of things. 
So it, it's pretty rare for me to read a attaboy here at the meeting, but because it's a work session, I just got this this afternoon. It's to uh, it, it's from a customer who uses our planning used our planning department. It said, "I'm writing to you to express my deep appreciation to you and your staff for the exceptional cooperation and diligence demonstrated regarding the recently completed Ross Dress for Less in Oregon City." Working with your professional staff was such a welcome experience, I felt it warranted a letter acknowledging the exceptional commitment to service to complete our project. I especially wanted to acknowledge Plan Review, Building Inspector, Samantha and Scott for their knowledge and experience in the Plan Review and Inspection process, uh, and also Building Inspector Robert for his thorough, firm, but fair and knowledgeable experience in the Plan Review and Inspecting of our project. And then he goes on to mention, uh, say, practical experience inspections and especially your office staff employee, Debbie, for her commitment to customer service to ensure that we were on task to complete the project on time. She followed through with every promise she made. In closing, it's so refreshing to work with a jurisdiction that demonstrates their commitment to serve the public's interest in completing a safe and functional project that will serve the community for an extended period of time. Once again, thank you. It was a pleasure working with the staff at the Oregon City Planning and Development. Mm, that's nice. So that's nice because that isn't. Um, it's kind of unusual to get, yeah. <laughs> even when people are done and they have a positive experience. It's more of a, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got through that one, and they don't take the time to revisit all the fun they had because it's a tough. Yeah. You know, it's not easy. Right. Even if you follow all the rules and you get great help, it's still a lot of expense. Yeah. And, you know. So I just wanted to, my hat's off to Mr. Conkle and his department for their efforts on the Ross Dress for Less. Well, and I know some of you will be going to that ribbon cutting in the next day or two, and hopefully Saturday you'll see morning. the results. When is the ribbon cutting? I have Saturday morning, I think. I, I think it's 845. Uh, I wanted to state that I've been, I was invited uh, to participate in the ribbon cutting. Uh, I, I think I've indicated to you I'm, I'm uh, going to La Grand uh, where the decisions are going to be made regarding the um, the National uh, Register uh, designation of some of our facilities and I don't want to take off at 5 in the morning to get there and end up the next night about 1 o'clock getting back so I've asked chair I've asked uh, chair Ross to Roth to, Ro repre <laughs> to represent us at Ross. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna, you're going to own that store. <laughs> Where our fear is, which is we're going to go up there and say Ross. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so anyway, uh, so she'll she'll be formally representing us, and my understanding is Marine Cole's going to be there because they have actually made a donation to our library. Yay! Right. Oh, very nice. Yay! That's all I have this evening, Your Honor. Okay.